welcome to my channel. Whew. Let me take this stuff off. Thank you guys so much for joining me on this video of the dangers of being a dog groomer. Now, when I first became a dog groomer, I really didn't think of anything like the stress in my body or me dealing with sharp instruments around a moving object. But today we're going to discuss what we, uh, or what a lot of groomers suffer from, which is groomer's lung. Now, according to groomer's advice, um, the one danger that most people do not consider when you think about doing dog grooming as a career, when you are working with many dogs a day, you are inhaling all their pet dander. Especially noticeable during hydraulic drying, pet dander can be a major health risk to dog groomers. Also, when we're cutting hair, you are inhaling tiny sharp pieces into your lungs. All of this can add up to major respiratory damage for those who have been grooming for many years. Many establishments are now requiring that groomers wear protective masks to prevent the dander and hair from being inhaled. And then this particular person who wrote this article wrote, I am going to be honest, I never wore masks, but now years later, I wish I had. And I have been a dog groomer for a few years now, and I will have to agree with that person. I wish that I had someone like me on YouTube telling the, the, the old, you know, me years ago, you need to wear specific things when you're dog grooming, or it's going to make you retire at a very young age, far younger than you would really want to retire being a groomer. Now, the most recently I have been dealing with a lot of respiratory issues and I finally went over to my doctor um, who has sent me to an allergist and has done a test x-ray to show that we're having some issues here. So what happens when you, and even if you use a clipper vac, which is a great tool, there are still um, small you know, areas or small pieces of hair that are going in the air, air and nail dust and et cetera um, that you're inhaling. And what happens is everything that you breathe starts to um, get into those air sacs in your lungs. And once they're in your air sacs, there's no way of getting them out. So I know I have met a lot of older groomers from the 80s and 90s who suffer from severe emphysema and uh, COPD and some, or actually uh, many groomers who have suffered from lung cancer due to these hazards in our daily uh, career. Now, I really feel that there should be better masks out in the industry, and I am kind of in the, um, you know, in the works to try to create the perfect mask. Now, today I'm going to show you a couple that I've tried and um, why they really don't benefit me, and the masks that I wear on a daily basis now and some eye and ear protection because uh, there are also risks um, being a groomer with your eyes as well as your ears. Now the first mask that I ever purchased was this healthy mask, super cute, right? Uh, with this pattern, do not recommend this. Let me tell you why. I've washed this and I wash this alone with all my other masks in the washer. And even though I've washed it, you still see these micro shards of hair stuck in this material. So I can always feel it on my face and it really has not benefited me. So I personally do not like this one. Another mask that uh, one of my groomer friends recommended is a bog mask. The, uh, it's about $40, so it's actually a pretty expensive mask. Excuse me. I thought it was so cute. They had such cute designs. It has a little vent to vent out the bad stuff. This is the one I was initially wearing. Super cute. You can see I can breathe in, but you know what? Unfortunately, where my nose is, there are... Um, areas for the hair to come in and then I can feel it when I'm breathing in. So this doesn't hundred percent protect me from, uh, getting the dander and the nail dust in, um, my lungs. So I thought to myself, okay, maybe the cloth ones are not going to work. Let me do some rubber ones. 
At one point I even had a gas mask on, but that's really hard for me to breathe in because I already have respiratory issues, um, you know, from not wearing a mask all those years. So I tried this one right here. I got it from Amazon, I think for $20. And you know what? Um, it didn't work for me because it just squished in too tightly to my nose and I couldn't breathe. So lastly, let me tell you the masks that I use on a regular basis now. My sister's friend, he's a CNC machinist and he wears these masks because he has like micro shards of metal that he deals with repairing these machines and he thought that this would be very beneficial. I think it's great. It's disposable. I use one every new grooming day. Um, it, the brand is called Benahol. Um, so it has this, the metal strap where the nose is. And then it has this material that ensures that nothing slips through the nose um, to breathe any of the shards of anything. And then this is very comfortable and it has a little vent here. And then I'll show you my face. It fits my face very well. It's not too hot. It's not pushing on my nose. Um, this is the best that I found, to be honest. Um, is there a huge lack in mass? Absolutely. Do I think that we can have a beneficial mass that's made out of cloth? I don't think so because too many things are caught on to cotton or other fabrics that you're trying to deal with. So we just need to find a feasible option that is like cleanable, like rubber, but also breathable like cotton. Now I haven't concluded that, but that is like my journey. That is like my purpose is to find the perfect mass for groomers because you know, a lot of states we don't require to be licensed as a groomer and sometimes people become self-taught groomers like I am and we just don't understand the dangers until we go to seminars like I did at Groomers West and realize that all these groomers are dying from lung cancer or having emphysema or severe COPD and retiring at a young age. So there's two other things I want to discuss. Eye protection and ear protection. Now when you are uh, blowing out a German Shepherd, Golden Retriever, those double-coated dogs that really have a lot of undercoat, sometimes your force out dryer will shoot back the hair into your eyes. Now that's not good. Constant um, irritation in the eyes of little hairs. So what I would recommend is some goggles. These particular ones I took from my husband after he had LASIK surgery. Uh, they're great. They have the rubber all the way around. Very attractive looking, right? I know. And anyways, it gets all the hair out of the eyes. One last thing is ear protection. I use a K92 force dryer. Um, it's a very high power, very loud force dryer. Amazingly effective, great, gives great results for the coat. However, a lot of damage on the ears. So I purchased these 3M, um, you know, headset headphones from Home Depot for under $30. And when I put the force dryer on, I can't even hear myself talk right now. It's very um, effective and very cheap, I think. Or you can also get the ones that you can stick in your ear. But I think these are just easier for me to throw on when I'm blow drying a dog. And that's about it. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate all my subscribers. If you like this video, don't forget to give me a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. I would love to make more videos for you guys. And I hope these are very helpful for groomers or people that are looking to become a groomer. Um, anyways, I'll see you guys next time. Bye.